Cool. Welcome to KubeCon 2020, North America edition. My name is Mayan Kumar. I'm a software architect at Salesforce. And with me, I have my colleague Hayek. I'm responsible for our public cloud Kubernetes strategy and helping Salesforce migrate our services to public cloud in a cloud native way. Thanks, Mayank. Hi, folks. I'm Hayek. I'm a senior member of technical staff here in Salesforce. Uh, I work on projects that cover areas such as security and distributed systems. Uh, uh, well, here in Salesforce, we are big believers in uh, open source and we try to contribute as much as possible. And uh, so as part of those contributions, earlier this year, we uh, open sourced a generic solution for sidecar injection for Kubernetes workloads. So let's dive in. Cool. So when Kubernetes announced the support for mutating admission controllers in 1.9, the sidecar pattern really became a first class agent of Kubernetes. Many of the infrastructure teams at Salesforce independently chose that pattern and started to use that to dynamically inject sidecars in Kubernetes workloads. This worked well until we realized that each of the teams was writing the exact same source code. The same set of unit tests, same integration tests and producing the same Docker image writing the same health charts as well, debugging the same problems in Kubernetes cluster. At that point, we realized we should take a step back and see if we could derive a common pattern. We discovered that each team was using an annotation on newly created pods to trigger the injection of one or more sidecars. Each team had their own annotation namespace, sometimes one or even more, and an annotation trigger. If the annotation was present on the pod, that meant it was a target for injection. So we looked around in the open source world to see if someone had already solved this generically. We did find at least one open source project, but it did not fit our situation particularly well. At that point, we wrote a spec for what an ideal sidecar injector would look like, dropped some code into a new repo, and this generic sidecar injector was born. So at a high level, the generic sidecar injector is a mutating webhook con admission controller that allows injection of additional containers, init containers and volumes at the time of pod creation. So how do you use it? It basically uses a generic configuration that consists of two parts. What needs to be injected and what triggers those injections? What needs to be injected is basically called sidecar configuration. What triggers is the mutation configuration. Separating out these configurations allowed teams to specify multiple sidecars and multiple mutations and independently choose which mutation injects which sidecars. This loose coupling supports different team structures such as if one team is supporting multiple sidecars or each team is supporting just one. So in the slide you can see, take a look, sidecar configuration is showing two sidecars that needs to be injected. The mutation configuration is doing, showing two annotations and it also maps which annotation will trigger which sidecar injection. So logging will inject sidecar one and the monitoring annotation will inject sidecar two. Let's go move on to the next slide, yeah. Cool, so the, some of the features that we talked about, in addition to containers, we support init containers and volume. And supporting multiple mutation config allows you to independently choose which mutation will trigger which injection from the sidecar. One of the interesting features about the generic sidecar injector is that it not only supports uh, sidecar configuration using environment variables, that is the native way, but it also allows you to specify sidecar configuration using Golang templates. Hayek will show you a demo of how that actually works. So advantages, I mean, we already saw uh, uh, the advantages. It allows you to write code for mutation admission controllers uh, uh, and all of the teams can share the exact same code. So seven teams within Salesforce using, uh, are using the same code to solve multiple critical infrastructure sidecar needs. Uh, some of the examples are monitoring, logging, certificate rotation, image signing, etc. So inner sourcing is avoiding duplicate work, avoiding reinventing the wheel and avoiding re repeating the same mistakes. So let's, let's look at the demo now. Thanks, Mayank. Okay, let's go to the demo. So I will just move this thing here. It will disappear in a minute. So let's see. So here locally, we have a, a Kubernetes cluster set up and you can see that it has 
couple of pods running, right? So one of the pods you can notice is the sidecar injector uh, pod, which is running in the sidecar injector next phase. So this is the pod that is running our generic sidecar uh, injector. So for the purpose of this, then we prepare two folders. One is demo one and another one is demo two. Demo one folder contains, uh, shows the demo, uh, how to do config driven injection. And the demo two shows in addition to uh, injecting uh, based on the config driven injection, it also shows how to, uh, how to configure your sidecars based on the annotations that are coming from the pod. So let's go and dive in. So we are in the demo one folder. We have two files here, config method YAML and pod.yaml. Let's take a look at what is in the config method YAML. So you can see that it contains two sections. One is the mutation config.yaml, another one is sidecar config.yaml. Mutation config.yaml contains the mutation configs as Mike mentioned, and each of these mutation configs contains the annotation that is supposed to trigger uh, this mutation config. And also it contains the list of containers that this particular mutation config will inject. Similarly, you can see that the second config again contains another trigger, different trigger, and it contains the list of containers that it can inject. And of course, the list of containers can be multiple, you can specify multiple containers here to inject. So, and also you can see that there is sidecar config.yaml, which is, uh, which is uh, just a description of the containers that you want to uh, inject. In particular, the name of the container, the image that corresponds to this container, and the command that this container will run. So let's go ahead and apply our config.yaml because uh, before the demo, we already applied this config.yaml. It's all that nothing has changed. Okay, let's go ahead and apply our pod. Before, before actually applying our pod, we can let's give it a look at what is inside pod. You can see that it is just a very basic pod specification. However, there is one uh, critical thing to uh, pay attention to. You can see that there's two annotations, logging and monitoring annotations, and all and each of them is enabled. And you can see that the way the, the key of this annotation matches exactly the uh, annotation trigger we had in the mutation config. In particular, annotation namespace slash annotation trigger. And you can see it is in the enabled state. That means that if we go ahead and apply our pod.yaml, this will create the pod. Let's take a look at the pod inside demo namespace. You can see that the pod is being created. Let's wait a couple of seconds to finish the creation. You see now pod is running. And you can see that uh, it, instead of having just one container, which was in the spec of the pod.yaml, you can see that it has a couple of containers running. In particular, it is three containers. Let's see what are these containers. If we describe the pod one. You can see that the, it not only it contains the container, main container that was in the pod.yaml, but it also has the injected container. In particular, it has monitoring sidecar container and the uh, logging sidecar container. That is because if you remember, we had the annotations in the pod.yaml which explicitly uh, mentioned what should be injected and they triggered the injection by generic injector. Now this, uh, with this, let's go to our second demo. So let's go to the second demo. And you've seen the second demo, we have again, two files, config map YAML, same structure and the pod YAML. Let's open config map.yaml. You can see that it is same structure. However, there is one uh, critical difference, which is the volume section. You can see, as Mike mentioned earlier, you can inject not only containers, not only init container, but also volume. In this particular case, we are injecting volumes of one volume and we are, we are mounting it to our uh, monitoring sidecar, which means that uh, any place where monitoring sidecar is injected, this volume should be mounted to this monitoring sidecar container. However, one other thing to mention is that you can see that the secret name from which this volume is derived, it is, it is, uh, it doesn't contain static value. Instead, it is, it has a suffix which is basically templatized. And you can see that the templatized value comes from the annotations of the pod. This is how we achieve templatization based on the pod's uh, annotations. Uh, the idea is that later when the, uh, the pod will have the chance to specify this annotation and provide any value it wants for the secret. So now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the pod.yaml. Again, it is almost similar to the earlier pod.yaml that we had for demo one. The only difference is that now it contains, not only it contains the inject triggers for the injection, but it also contains uh, this annotation that matches the annotation we had in our templatized config. And you can see in this case, we have demo two, which means that uh, the, the, the result we are expecting is that the secret name will become AWS-IM-the value here, which is demo two. 
So let's go ahead and deploy, let's go ahead and deploy our config.yaml. Yeah, we apply it. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't have uh, the future where uh, Bode automatically reloads the config map.yaml, which means that uh, in order to reload the new config map.yaml, we need to delete the bot and recreate it. So let's go ahead and take this bot and let's delete it. Injector. Once deleted, the new pod, of course, Kubernetes will do its magic. It will again create a pod, and in this case, it will pick up the new uh, the new config map. So the pod is running. Let's go ahead now and apply our pod.yaml. Okay, the pod two is being created. Let's go ahead and do watch. So let's wait again a couple of seconds to see the pod being created. Okay, the pod is created. So let's go and see what is what is in the config of the pod the demo two. You can see that again, it has three out of the three containers, which is which means that config driven injection worked. However, it has one other thing, which is in the monitoring sidecar, it has the following volume mounted, as we mentioned in our uh, mutation config. It has the volume mounted and the value of the secret comes from the templatized version, which is AWS IAM demo two. This is what we exactly uh, expected. This means that the, uh, the value of the secret uh, came from the annotation that was specified on the pod level. So to make sure we are not missing anything, let's go ahead and do uh, uh, exec into the container and let's see the value of our secret. That's it, it works. We see the secret and that means that everything worked as we expected. That's it. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was the two demo that we prepared. Feel free to go and try it out and uh, give us feedback. For trying it out, we provide a couple of links here. We provide contribute link, which just simply points to our uh, our source code. Uh, you can go ahead, take a look at source code. Feel free to just suggest changes. And uh, we have the blog, which contains uh, the info that we provided in this demo and uh, more. So then you can also go to try out an example, which contains the examples that we showed. Again, we encourage you to try it out and tell us the feedback, tell us your feedback. So, and of course, uh, we have, uh, there, are, there are the following hours, which are basically the hours we are available. Please feel free to come by and say hi. And yeah, and just chat about this and provide our feedback. We'll be happy to meet you. Cool, thanks Hayat. Yeah, I think uh, we'll be happy to answer questions at that time. And note that uh, the timings are in EST. So we'll happy to answer questions related to the injector as well as any contribution related uh, things. We welcome any contributions to that. So thanks all of you and have a happy KubeCon 2020. Thank you, Bye. Thank you everyone.